this is springtime and especially with today's weather, we are catching spring fever here in Michigan. And what does that mean? A trip to the farmer's market and one of our favorite farmer's market, Eastern Market in downtown Detroit. Let's bring in Dan Carmody. He's the president of the market. Dan, always great having you with us. How are you? I'm terrific, Ronnie. How are you doing today? We are great. How lucky for you to be outside. Yes, it is. Uh, my default office is in my man cave in the basement. For the, <laughs> for the viewers, this is much more inspiring. So. And, and the birds sound lovely. Yeah, uh, I'm keeping our two corgis at bay. They have their bark collars on. Otherwise, they'd be out here wrestling and uh, great entertainment, but would interfere with the important messages I have to give to well, and let's jump into those messages because we do know uh, Easter Market is um, it is such a gem here in our community. In fact, you guys are being nominated as uh, USA Today's Reader's Choice Top 10 Best Public Markets. Congratulations to you. But we've known that all along. Yeah, well, it's a real source of pride to have been associated with the market since 2007. You know, the Eastern Market Partnership is a nonprofit that manages the market on behalf of the city that still owns the market. And uh, it, it's a joy to go to work every day because it's a place that people, um, everybody thinks it's theirs. And, and they come at it from so many different directions. And certainly the spring season is important at the market. You know, we are a, a major source of flower and, and plant sales. And, uh, you know, we've had to make those uh, adjustments to COVID in, in 2021 is going to be just as uh, different from normal as 2020 was. And so with that, Dan, uh, there are so many different aspects to running the market. Number one, it's the public, but uh, number two, it's also the farmers and the supply. So um, it, as people start to return, because we're a year into this, last year at this time, we were still all uneasy as to what was happening. Hunkering, <laughs> hunkering down. Right? That was so true. Um, but uh, so this year, do you anticipate the crowds are going to get back to somewhat pre-pandemic normal numbers? Well, it's, you know, it's fascinating. We're open year round. We never closed uh, because of, of the pandemic. Um, generally speaking, the first quarter of the year is our slowest. And last year, it went from slowest to slower. So, you know, April was awful. And then from May and you know, mid-May on, we began to see numbers slowly kind of climb back to, you know, I wouldn't say normal, but reasonable. And quite frankly, the first quarter of this year, uh, to testimony, to, you know, testimony to people's sort of uh, cabin fever and wanting to do it is that is normal. Uh, we had the busiest first quarter we ever had. And so we see the spring numbers much busier than they were a year ago. Uh, but, you know, we have, we have to take precaution. You know, Flower Day itself is our single largest day of the year. Upwards of 100,000 people show up. We simply can't do that in a COVID uh, world. So instead of focusing on one day, we're going to try to remind people that flowers, flowers has always been a season in Eastern Market, and it starts early May and it ends you know, late June, and you can come any Saturday and get a great selection of flowers. And this year we're jump starting our Tuesday market, which tend to start in, as crops come in the, to eat in June, we're gonna actually start the Tuesday market in May, uh, four weeks with nothing but flowers on the 4th, 11th, 4th, 4th 11th, 18th, and 25th. So we're gonna spike flower season. There'll be no flower day, but you'll be able to come on Tuesdays for flowers and shop a little more leisurely. And then Saturdays will be crazy. Uh, uh, but you'll have a great selection on Saturdays as well. And I will say, um, I actually like this better because I've been there for flower days, not only covering it as a reporter, but also as a shopper. And parking can be a nightmare, um, and getting in and out with the crowd. So I think this is a great way to manage it, but also bringing people into the city in the week as well, because people are working uh, differently now. So they have a little bit more flexibility in their schedule. So do you anticipate those Tuesday flower days are going to be pretty popular? Yeah, you know, we've seen, you know, we've run the Tuesday market as a seasonal, uh, you know, farmer's market for the last eight years or so. And those numbers have been steady. Not, 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 they don't compare, you know, it's a scale model of the Saturday market. It's obviously not the Saturday market crowd, but we expect that you know we'll have reasonable traffic because as you say 
people do have a lot more flexibility in, in when they're choosing to work and, and when they can slot in some free time. And we think the Tuesday market, as we find with people shopping for groceries, it's way more convenient. It's way less jostling. If you're a senior citizen, or if you're a family with small children, you know, the, the chaos of the Saturday market, which I find highly contagious and desirable, isn't something that maybe, you know, if you're, if you're, a, a, you know, uh, small kids or, we're afraid of getting jostled uh, as you walk through the market. So uh, we think it's a lot more convenient, the parking. You know, you can pull up basically and uh, almost curbside and, and get your plants and flowers. So, yeah, there's – there's, and more than more than that, it, it's just to remind people that it is a season. It's not a day. And, and while that, that flower day had become such a wonderful tradition and we hope in 2022 it comes back bigger and stronger than ever, but it's really a festival day and it's as much about the – walking the street and all the side lots as it is about the the, the great it, it is a it will be a one day bigger selection of flowers but that's not to say that the saturday and tuesday markets won't have a great selection of flowers we're speaking with dan carmody he's the president for eastern market partnership and with that dan if i can ask what is the selection on tuesday going to be because we know that last year was a very challenging right. year for our farmers and supply was down. Do you anticipate it's going to be back um, uh, and the selection is going to be there? Uh, well, last year was a very fascinating year. In April, we worried a lot about our flower growers because uh, sort of the, the precursor to flower season is Easter weekend when, when some of the flower, early flower growers will show up and sell Easter lilies and other, you know, Easter specific plants. And we were still under the essential, we basically got a couple of vendors into the market that were, it was a gray area with regard to the governor's mandates at that time. Um, and so virtually no Easter sales took place. So last year we devised a, a, a electron, you know, a, a popular, it, it turned out to be successful, but pretty costly, a place where people go online and order flowers and then arrange for pickups so they didn't have to get out of their car at all. And, and we did some sales that way. But between Saturdays and their own greenhouses, what happened last year was that people recognizing that they were gonna spend more time around their house, flower growers never had a better year than they had last year. So it started slow, but May and June, flower sales were as strong as they've ever been. And, and the early signs are that that's continuing this year. Now I'll say that I was fooled once before when I first got here in 2008, if you recall, the recession really started in the fall of that year. And in the spring, flower sales were, uh, times were tough in Michigan before they got tough nationally. And when we go into recession or periods of economic question, flower sales go up because they're a cheap form of entertainment. You can't take the week of vacation, but you're gonna spend more time in your patio. You buy a couple extra flats of flowers. Uh, 2009 taught us that when things are really, really, really bad, people don't buy flowers at all. They save their money for rent and for gas and for utilities. And so we still think we're in recession or, you know, we're still coming out of the economic turmoil of COVID. And we expect a, a, a banner year with flower sales. Percentage wise, most of our growers will probably sell more in their own greenhouses and through other channels in the sell market because we won't have that one day massive uh, explosion of flower sales, but we'll have four or five really good Saturdays and we'll have hopefully four really good Tuesdays to help those farmers succeed. So Dan, with that, um, behind the scenes, what does it take to be able to get some of the vendors here? Are you competing with other markets or are you guys so well established some uh, of these farmers want to come to you? You know, this is the first, you know, we're actually seeing a reluctance to come back to market this year just because sales were so strong. Uh, at their own greenhouses on their farms last year. People went and got the flowers where they needed to go get them. And so the biggest issue, like I think you'll hear time and time again, isn't that farmers don't want to come. It's just that they can't find enough staff to be able to do multiple things in multiple times. So we have a few fewer growers coming this year than last year. It's not because they don't want to be here. It's just because they can't find the bodies to operate multiple you know, places both on their farm at a, and, and at Eastern Market. 
That is a really um, such a sad predicament that so many businesses are in right now, right. Um, you know, uh, being unable to even be able to sell uh, what they want to sell because they can't find the help. Um, we do know, though, Easter Market isn't just about the flowers. Right. You have great food as well. How have the food sales been? Because I do think in the pandemic, especially in the beginning, we started to pay more attention about our food source and where our food was coming from. Yeah, you know, we were in the middle of a tsunami, if you will. You know, half of our, roughly in this country, half of our food is purchased at restaurants and, and eaten off premise, you know, eaten either delivery or on premise. And half of our food comes from grocery stores. And all of a sudden, that whole, half of the food sector was sort of closed down. And so early on, there was a lot of food trapped in that sales channel that, you know, a supplier to restaurants doesn't necessarily supply grocery stores. And so there was, you know, you go back to the early days of the pandemic, there were a lot of barren shelves on the one hand. And then you had wholesalers sitting on $3 million worth of fruits and vegetables that they had no market for. So we pivoted pretty quickly. Uh, we did some innovative things. I think we started a Tuesday drive through market last April where a lot of these wholesale businesses sold to restaurants, actually sold in bulk to consumers. And we had a car line uh, about a mile long for about three weeks where people on behalf of their neighborhoods or block parties would uh, kind of buy a, a trunk load of product and, and distribute it when it got home. So eventually, those, you know, those supply channels kind of evened out and the restaurant industry slowly has opened back up. So that's not the problem it was. But there's still a lot of people with food need. Uh, we started packing food boxes as an alternate way for people to get support the Saturday market. And we were up to about 400 boxes a week where people didn't have to get out of their car. They could buy from Saturday vendors, pull up, and someone would put it in their trunk with a prepaid food box. And that put us in position then when the federal government uh, came up with a program called Farmers to Family Food Boxes. We were packing between May and September 2,000 food boxes a week. Wow. Uh, in addition to 1,000 other food boxes a week between the Saturday program and that support we got from local funders for group homes, senior centers, and you know places like that. Uh, so, you know, we, we changed our whole business model last year. Instead of the work we do around food access, about trying to get fresh fruits and vegetables into places where they don't ordinarily go and setting up mobile farm stands, we were simply delivering it in boxes instead. And what we noticed is that a lot of, a lot of people came to the stark conclusion that maybe eating well is important to your health. And, and what we saw with the comorbidities of type 2 diabetes and the death rates from COVID were pretty striking that people that had good um, autoimmune systems because they ate a diet with a lot of nutrient-dense foods were surviving the, the pandemic better than those who weren't. And what we saw was a, the farmers who were growing row crops and had, a, like flower growers, had a pretty good year because the health message got through. Some of our specialty vendors doing exotic things that maybe were more once one of a kind, and you kind of needed to taste to, to see if you wanted to commit your $10 to that jar of mustard or, or jam. Those, those vendors didn't do as well because we couldn't allow sampling. And so the, the pandemic was really selective for us at the market. Our revenues were down because we had a space out vendor. So even if vendors wanted to come, we couldn't take as many as we usually do. We, we basically had a 50% occupancy on vendors. So our, so our revenues were down there. You know, the offset from doing services like the food box helped to sustain us. But that was one time only. You know, we're still spacing out our vendors this year. Uh, we also do a lot of events at the market when we're not uh, operating the market, and, and those went away almost entirely. They're starting to creep back in now. We're, we're booking weddings, you know, modest in size compared to the old days, but we're still starting to see that uptick again. So, you know, 2021 is going to be every bit as difficult to navigate as 2020 was, uh, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. So with that, Dan, we're speaking with Dan Carmody. He's the president for Eastern Market Partnership. Uh, we do know you are a nonprofit. And um, a lot of your bottom line, you are supported by renting out the sheds for so many of the events, the weddings, as you just mentioned. But also, we know uh, there have been food uh, truck rallies and so many other things that have gone on there at Eastern Market. Are those, do you anticipate um, as we keep going, are they going to make a comeback? And will that help your bottom line? How are you guys doing? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, that, you know, we typically do half a million dollars in rental sales to those kind of uses. Last year was like $50,000. Wow. Um, 
this year we expect, you know, we won't get back to a half a million, but we'll, we'll get more than halfway back. And what we're seeing is, unlike a lot of uh, rental facilities, our, you know, a couple of our, sh our sheds don't have enclosures, so they're kind of hybrid indoor-outdoor spaces. So people feel maybe a little bit more comfortable doing a trade show in shed two that, that has air flowing through it than they do in a traditional setting in, in, a, in a room that has no fresh air going through it. So we've picked up some kind of new events because of that. Uh, but again, um, and this wave is just, this last wave is just starting to trend down. So, you know, it, it's still very much week to week to see, you know, how, how this thing plays out. You know, a, a new strain comes through and those numbers could go back up. So we got to, we can't make too many assumptions at this point. So uh, with that, just another minute or two with you here on the Megacast, we know the CDC is expected today to release new guidelines regarding wearing a mask outdoors. If they uh, come out to say, hey, vaccinated people don't have to wear a mask, do you anticipate that's going to change anything you are doing there at Eastern Market? Well, because of the way, you know, we, we have for the second season now how to put up temporary fencing, something I hate to do because one of the, the great attractions of the market is that it has a, a thousand front doors yeah. and, we, and we want people to come from wherever they found their parking space to make a beeline to where they need to go. But we do at times need to control the total number of people on site just to try to st stop the spread. And so we have had very high compliance with people wearing face coverings and masks. And even though people are vaccinated, once people are in the market, it's really hard to, you're not going to maintain six foot of separation. Let's, let's be honest about that. You're, you're going to be uh, in a, a travel lane with a, a lot of other people walking the same place. You're not, you know, a, a lot of the markets, a lot less of the market the last two years has been people bringing in their three generation extended families. And, and that's kind of sad, but we're starting to see more of that now. Uh, up, pop up again, and, and the masks just make it easier to be able to continue to have that that close interaction with people. So we hope that mask wearing uh, in, in our public outdoor space remains high, just because we it's it's easier than trying to get people six foot apart from each other. Yeah, and I, I will say um, when I was there a few weeks ago, it is a little confusing with the fencing and how it ha it's going. Um, so I have to ask too, uh, what's up with the um, parking garage? Uh, I know it's owned by the city of Detroit. Do you anticipate, um, are they going to refurbish that to help you with parking there at Eastern Market? Um, little surprise, uh, they've spent $2 million. It has been refurbished, uh, the new lighting, it looks much better. It's, oh, so is it open now? It is open now. They opened it uh, 1st of April. Um, uh, it, uh, it's during the week, they're actually, uh, as City Hall employees return to work, they're going to begin renovations of some of the downtown parking structures. So people are going to be parking there and then shuttled to City Hall and other city lots during the week. And then it will be available on Saturdays and Sundays for market customers. There is a fee. Uh, it is it is five dollars uh, one 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 time five dollar fee to park there, but it's literally sixty feet from the main line of the market. So nobody's using it. It was closed for so long. I think the people it's uh, you know out of their mind, but it's it's much improved. It's it's clean. It's light. Uh, it's safe. Uh, so we encourage people to to look up that option if you don't want to carry heavy plants. Uh, uh, the traditional one or two blocks as otherwise might be the case. And we know it will help some of the businesses outside of Eastern Market that are um, right, right there. They have their storefronts right there. So it's going to help some of them as well. And we should remind people Eastern Market is more than just the market. It really is a neighborhood and uh, support the market, but also some more support the small businesses that surround the market as well. Yeah, we've had, you know, last few years, there's been some, you know, we lost some of our long time uh, merchants, uh, there's been some change, but the bottom line is we have, we're a place dedicated to small independent businesses and we've been keeping track uh, as real estate trends change. We have 22 more businesses, small businesses today than we had in 2017 because we did need investment in real estate. We had a lot of spaces that were dormant or vacant for a long time and need to be broken up into smaller spaces. And, and that's what's happened. So we have a, a, an increasingly diverse mix of storefront businesses in addition to the market. 
you know, we're we're open this time of year, just on uh, Saturdays from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. But starting uh, next week, we'll open up on Tuesdays, 9 to 3. And then the first Sunday in June, we'll add Sundays from 10 to 4. But beyond that, those three days that we're open during the summertime, uh, Eastern Market businesses are open six or seven days a week. Uh, and uh, it's really a nice, with all the murals and things around the market, even if the market is closed, it's, it's a nice urban experience to come out and hang around and bring your bike and take advantage of the De Quinter cut and uh, the great art and architecture of the market district. Dan Carmody with us here on the Megacast. He's the president for Eastern Market Partnership. Dan, we always appreciate your time. Well, thanks. And Ronnie, same to you.